Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. This is Pradeep and you're watching Vlog of Note. So it's no secret that one of the worst kept secrets in the entire technology industry is the Google Pixel phone, which is kind of weird because we actually trust Google to keep virtually all of our information virtually secure. Anyway, so the Pixel 3 was leaked into oblivion last year and this year it seems to be no different with the Google Pixel 4 and the Google Pixel 4 XL. We know how these phones will look, how much they will cost and what their specifications would be. In this video, I thought we'd take a closer look at something that a lot of YouTubers seem to be overlooking about the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL, the Pixel Neural Core. Let's get started. So let's start with the beginning, the sorry state of Android versus iPhone processors. The Android and iPhone processor battle is done. The iPhone is way, way faster. There is no Android processor which is as fast as the iPhone. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, I'm gonna throw up the Geekbench score on the screen. This is the latest Geekbench 5, so the numbers might be a little bit different. Is way, way faster than even what someone would consider to be a fast Android phone. Let's throw up the OnePlus 7 Pro Geekbench score on the screen now, and you can see the difference is not even close. Even with a Snapdragon 855 Plus processor and Adreno 640 GPU, a faster refresh rate on the screen, in real world performance, it seems clear that the iPhone 11 completely smashes every other Android phone out there. And it becomes worse for an Android user when you compare one Android phone to the other because every flagship phone released in 2019 either has the Snapdragon 855 or the Snapdragon 855 Plus, making it very difficult for a user who wants the fastest Android phone possible to choose between them. Hold that thought for a second. Next, let's talk about the Pixel Camera. So the Google Camera app is the camera app which is found on the Google Pixel phones and it is arguably one of the best camera apps for any Android phone because of Google's excellent computational photography, their HDR+, their machine learning. XDA developers has created a page, I've linked to it in the description, where you can go and download the Google Camera app port for your specific Android phone. You can even download it for very obscure phones like the Le Eco phone or the HTC phone or the OnePlus 7 phones. Even if you do download the Google Camera mod, however, you will realize two things. One, it's not quite as good as the Google Pixel's camera and more on that in a second. And two, it does not support secondary or even third lenses because, well, Google is Google. Now, let's talk about the Google Pixel Visual Core. So Google introduced the Pixel Visual Core way back in 2017, seems so long back right now, with the Google Pixel 2 and the Google Pixel 2 XL. It was a core processor which was added to the Snapdragon processor on these phones and it dramatically increased the image signal processing on these phones. It was supposed to be five times faster at image signal processing while using less power, a great win. It was also reflected in the DxO Mark score whether you trust them or not with the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL having the best cameras on the planet even until recently, until the launch of the iPhone 11, the Google Pixel 3 and the Google Pixel 3 XL had the best smartphone cameras for photos, important. Let's talk about the iPhone 11 and semantic rendering now. Semantic rendering without getting too technical is something that allows the iPhone to identify the scene and then automatically adjust the sharpness, the highlights or the dampness of the photos in order to give you what the camera thinks the photo should look like and nine times out of 10, that is the best photo that is available for that particular scene. For example, the iPhone can look at a picture which involves human hair and automatically sharpen the hair for you to give you a crystal clear image. This again is reflected in the fact that the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max have the best smartphone cameras currently in the world. Enter the Google Pixel Neural Core. A few days back, 9to5 Google had an exclusive. I will link to that in the description right next to that like button. It had an exclusive where they outed the complete spec sheet of the Google Pixel 4 and the Google Pixel 4 XL. Not like we didn't know it already, but there, buried inside the specifications, you could see next to the Snapdragon 855 processor that Google Pixel 4 and the Google Pixel 4 XL will have the Pixel Neural Core. Now, without getting too technical into the Pixel Neural Core, let's talk about neural networks. NVIDIA was one of the earlier companies which put out a blog post way back in 2016 with one of their engineers, ironically called Bond, who was using a software development kit, more ironically called Judson TX1, in order to automatically identify a cat on his lawn 
and then turn on the sprinkler. First world problems, right? A neural network adds additional information to the input coming into the system called vectors and helps the processor act better on the same input. One of the best examples of the same could be Apple's T2 chip, which was added to the MacBook Pros launched this year and resulted in an Intel Core processor clocked at 1.4 gigahertz quad core, having performance that no other MacBook had been able to match up until then because of this SMC called the T2 chip, which was handling a lot of the heavy lifting. And so it is my conjecture, I hope and believe that the PNC, the Pixel Neural Core can be useful on the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL in order to do three things. The first is give us better photos and videos, hopefully this time. The second is to give us better battery life because the Pixel Visual Core consumed less battery and today the iPhone 11 Pro Max has beaten every other smartphone in the battery drain test and finally to give us better performance because it can give us better touch input recognition, it can give us better support for Project Soli, Google's hands-free interaction, and it can give us better Face ID. The Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL are the first widely available Android phones to have actual Face IDs instead of taking a selfie of the user. So that's about it. The Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL will be unveiled on October 15th, which means that they will launch sometime towards the end of October and in India, you should expect them sometime towards the end of November. As to pricing, the Pixel 4 XL for the 64 GB version is going to be priced at about 1,200 Canadian dollars, which means adding the 30% import duty that Google levies on all of their products, the Pixel 4 XL 64 GB will probably be priced in India at the end of November at 84,000 rupees. Which means if the Pixel Neural Core doesn't do all of the things above, you'd be better off buying the OnePlus 7T and installing the Google Camera Mod. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Drop your comments down below on the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. Do you think the Pixel Neural Core will be all it's cracked up to be? Subscribe to the Vlog of Note channel on YouTube. Ring that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And I will see you guys in the next one.